everybody. I'm Brenda King with the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum and today we're going to talk about North American porcupines and I bet you can guess why I am not holding her, why she's being demonstrated on the table. We'll talk about that in just a second. But one of the main things people always want to know is, my goodness, I didn't think there were porcupines in the desert. Well here in the Sonoran Desert and at the Desert Museum, we like to talk about the wide variety of habitats not only right in the desert, but the habitats that surround the desert. And we have local mountain ranges. Mount Lemmon is one of our most well-known mountains. We have the Chiricahuas and the Rincon Mountains, and that's where you would find porcupines. She's going to be up in a tree during the daytime. She'll be sleeping in a tree, and then at nighttime she'll come down and maybe go to a new tree or find a nice log to burrow underneath. This particular porcupine is a female, and she is about 15 to 16 pounds. If you were to go further north in the United States or into Canada, they would actually get larger. So as you go south, the animals get a little bit smaller in size, and that might have something to do with the desert heat. Now let's talk about quills. She's showing you her defense right now, this backside. People are always saying, well, get away from her. She can shoot her quills. No, she can't. That's a myth. She has three layers of hair, these really long hairs right here. These are called guard hairs, and they're very, very soft. Underneath the guard hairs are her quills, and quills are just a modified hair. They're hollow, and they're very loosely attached to her skin. So if a predator were to come up, she would show you her backside. She might swat with that tail, and those quills can be stuck into the predator's nose or face while she makes her great escape. Underneath her quills, she has a third layer of hair, and that's her insulating fur, helps to keep her warm. Now right now she's eating a variety of produce, carrots and, and corn, and she's got some peanuts and some oranges, and those certainly would not things, are not things you would find her eating up in the mountains. But she is an herbivore, so these kind of simulate some of her diet choices. In the wild, she's gonna be wanting eating tree bark. So she would peel actually the outer layer of the bark off and eat the soft layers underneath. I bet you think that you don't like tree bark. You do. If you eat cinnamon, you like tree bark. And that's just one, one way that we have some similarities. Now this particular porcupine had wandered down from the mountain and was found in downtown Tucson on somebody's porch. And in my discussions with veterinarians, in town, they tell me that about five or six times a year, people will bring their dogs in, and their dogs' noses are full of quills. Porcupines will oftentimes use our washes as a corridor to get from one mountain range to another, and perhaps when she was young, she was startled out of a wash and ended up right in downtown Tucson, and now she lives here at the Desert Museum. So if you're out this way, please come to our museum and visit our porcupines.